my name is Ben Guilford, I'm the owner of The Fire Brick Company and in this video we're going to take you through how to apply the acrylic roll-on render coating to seal the dome of your wood-fired brick oven kit. Covering the dome, uh, there's a whole heap of different coverings that you could put over this dome. Now what we've done, uh, so we did our perlite render the other day uh, and then over the top of that I have actually just done a thin coat of normal bagged render. I went down to our local hardware store uh, and bought a, a bag of dry render uh, that I just added water to and I just sponged that over the whole surface just to make it a little bit smoother. Now I thought I'd just do that because we've got actually our other oven it's just across the room, our P85, and I've deliberately left that one with just the simple perlite finish just so that you can sort of get uh, a feel for the different finishes that you can achieve. You could also do all kinds of other render finishes. You could do, you know, quite a, um, a detailed render where you get, you know, sort of a, a very coarse finish on the outside, if that's what's going to suit uh, the look best for you. So basically there's heaps of different ways of doing it. Um, but the key thing for the dome itself uh, is we want to waterproof it. We want to keep the water out of that render. The perlite render layer that we put on before, that 50 mil of perlite mixed with sand, lime and cement, is not waterproof. Now that's not to say it dissolves, it's just quite porous. Uh, so water will go through it. If it uh, lands on it, if, you get, if it's out in the rain, water will actually soak through that perlite and, and sort of gets held in it and eventually it'll actually transfer water through into the oven underneath. So we want to avoid that. Uh, and the way that we recommend uh, to sort of seal the dome is to apply a couple of thick coats of roll-on render. Uh, now roll-on render, here in Australia we call it acrylic roll-on render, so it's a water-based material. Uh, and it's designed for rolling onto the side of, of houses uh, it's a very commonly used um, uh, so it's, it's a material, it's sort, of, it's sort of like a paint, like a thick paint with a, a grit through it to give it a texture. The beauty of the roll-on render is, well it's, it's got multiple beauties. Um, so firstly it gives you uh, a colour, so you can get it in a whole range of different colours, uh, so you can pick a colour that's right for you, uh, and, and that gives you a nice uniform colour over the whole dome. Second is that it's semi-waterproof. So I can't say that it's waterproof as such, like I wouldn't use it as a pond liner, for example, um, but it's very, very water resistant. It's designed to be outdoors in the elements. Uh, so it's gonna keep the water out of the dome for us. All right, thirdly, and this is one of my favorite things about it, is it's stretchy. It's quite a stretchy material. Once it dries, uh, it's got a lot of give in it, and the beauty of that is that it will cover small cracks. Uh, you will find that you're going to get some cracking in the dome of the oven, which uh, we explained in our, our video about cracking. Uh, and this roll-on render will actually bridge those cracks, and when they try to move in the future, as you fire the oven and heat it and cool it, those cracks will try and expand and contract, and the acrylic render will bridge those and just stretch over the top of them so you'll never see them. And it won't allow water in through that crack. Okay, so we've got our precast blue gallery coated and now we're ready to put on the acrylic roll-on render. Uh, so remember guys, this is not a high temperature material and it doesn't have to be. The outside of this dome just doesn't get hot. It might get to 60 degrees if you really push the oven. If you have the oven running at 700 degrees internally, you might see temperatures of maybe 60 degrees on the outside of that dome. So that means we can use ordinary materials. Uh, we can use an acrylic roll-on paint effectively to seal the dome. Uh, alternatively, if you wanted, you could cover the dome with something else. So you're not limited to using roll-on render. Uh, not at all. Uh, in fact, you're pretty much only limited by your imagination. So you could cover the dome with tiles, with river pebbles, uh, you could make it into a giant mirror ball. 
there's a whole heap of different finishes that you could do on the outside of the dome to kind of dress it up. Uh, so we've seen a whole heap of different finishes uh, and they look fantastic. Uh, so in terms of tiling, there's a couple of guidelines. Don't, uh, don't cover it with something flammable. That's probably not smart. Uh, so don't, don't put timber uh, over the top of it. Um, again, very unlikely to have any kind of issue uh, given it's low temperature anyway, but we don't recommend that you cover it with something that is combustible. Uh, but you can cover it with tiles, with glass, with pebbles, with mosaic, whatever you want. Uh, and in terms of attaching it, I would actually recommend using a good old fashioned tile adhesive. Just get a really good strong tile adhesive from your local hardware store or tiling store. And that's going to do the job to hold your tiles onto the dome. Uh, another question we actually get surprisingly often is, oh, well, could I do another layer of brick over the dome because I want a sort of a brick finish on the outside? And of course, not a problem. Uh, you could uh, definitely do that. It would be quite a bit of work, of course, um, a lot of brick cutting involved to, to do that. Um, or something else you could do is actually cut brick tiles. So get the bricks and just cut the ends off them so that you've got the face of the brick and then treat that as a tile and tile the surface with pieces of brick. And that'll give you a really rustic brick finish on the outside. Again, these, there's, there's a myriad of ideas and, and, uh, and ways you could dress up the dome, uh, but we're going to be using the roll-on render. So, like I said earlier, you have to make sure the oven is 100% dry before you do that. And that means doing your full curing regime plus at least four major firings where you take the oven well over 400 degrees and you really get it roaring hot for a good few hours to make sure that you've driven out all of the remaining moisture that might be trapped in the oven. We do find that the calcium silicate board and the ceramic fiber blanket fantastic insulators, but they're also quite porous. They tend to hold water really well. And so it takes quite a lot of heat in the oven to actually dry out those materials because they're hiding behind a layer of refractory brick. Uh, and so it takes quite a lot of heat in the oven to get the heat all the way through the brick into the insulation to dry it out. So that's why we really recommend doing those four major firings to get rid of all that excess moisture. Uh, so you'll need some tools. Uh, I recommend uh, just a small roller. Now guys we have these for sale. You can buy them through our online shop or in store. Uh, so just a simple little uh, roller cover. If you're buying something locally you'll see this is quite a I guess a, a fluffy uh, cover. It's quite thick so this actually picks up and holds quite a lot of the render. I don't really recommend using the microfiber ones because they're just a bit too thin to hold the thick paint that we're going to be applying with it. And you'll also just want a little brush. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything super special. Uh, in fact, I recommend something you're using something that you can throw away at the end because the acrylic render is notoriously hard to wash out of brushes. Uh, now, Applying the roll-on render is really not rocket surgery. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so I won't spend too much time sort of explaining it to you. In terms of coating the dome, you know, roll it on nice and thick, which you'll see me doing in a second. Around the edges, just like if you're painting a wall, maybe you're painting a wall at home and you get to an edge that, you know, that's where the paint terminates. You, you have two options. You can cut it in with a brush. So if you have a really steady hand, you can use the brush to just cut the paint in along that edge. Um, I do not have a really steady hand. Um, I actually have a genetic tremor, which makes life just fun. Uh, and so I like to mask things off. Uh, so masking tape's really, really handy for this. So I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna mask uh, the areas that I don't want the paint to get onto. And then I can basically just paint right over that tape and then just peel it off when I'm done. On the, um, the tiles, so where the render comes down to meet your base, I really recommend actually allowing the render to spread out onto the tile by about five to 10 millimeters. The idea there is to really allow that acrylic render to bond with the tiles to give you a seal. 
So imagine this oven's out in the rain, it's pouring down, bucketing down, and all the water's running down over the dome and it's ponding on the tiles here. Uh, if there is a gap underneath the, you know, this edge, well, it's gonna wick that water in and try and draw it into the oven, uh, which is just something we're trying to avoid. So what I'm gonna do with the tape is actually just trace out a line that's about five or 10 millimeters off the edge of the render here to give me that little seal. the perlite render, I talked about trying to create a little valley in behind the precast flue gallery. Because we have to remember, particularly if this is being built outdoors and you're not building it into an enclosure, uh, you're gonna get a lot of rain on it over the years. And so some of that rain is gonna run down off the top of the dome and then come down here in behind the flue gallery. And if we just terminate the render hard against the flue gallery, water is gonna make its way in through that joint, um, which is not the end of the world, but if we can avoid that, then great, let's let's do it. So uh, what we've done is we've just used the render to create that little valley uh, in between the flue gallery and the render, so that we can then go over it with the acrylic render, which gives us that you know water resistant membrane. And so the water will then run down and run into this little valley that's all, all covered in, in the roll-on render, and then it's just gonna run off here uh, and hopefully not get into the oven. Again, I know I sound like I'm really um, being very, uh, sort of almost over the top with keeping water out, um, and it's, it's not the end of the world if you do get water in the oven, it happens, it's, it's normal, uh, so don't panic if that happens, but it's great if we can keep the oven dry, then it performs so much better because every time you fire it, you're not driving moisture out of it. Just a really quick tip on installing your uh, temperature gauge into your thermo well if you bought one. Uh, just be aware, we've got matching thread, uh, so we can just pop it in and screw it up. What you may find is um, before it gets tight, or when it gets tight, it might not be sitting on the exact angle that you want it to be. Now, it's no problem just to leave it sitting there loose. It's not like it's gonna magically unwind itself, but if you did want to, maybe, you, I don't know, you wanna leave it in there permanently, uh, and you wanna get the angle right and don't have the kids playing around and turning it upside down on you, then just get a little bit of Teflon tape and just run that around the thread just a couple of times and that'll just give you that little bit of bite when you put the gauge in and you screw it up, it'll just give you that little bit more um, grip in the thread. Right, we've got our roll-on render coat on, so I've just done one coat at the moment, uh, and I usually recommend doing at least two coats. The first coat goes on fairly thick because it's a very coarse surface that you're, you're applying it to. Uh, and you will find that there'll be tiny little holes, almost invisible to the naked eye, in that surface. So it's not 100% sealed just yet. That's what the second coat is going to do for you. 
I do recommend you let it sit uh, at least six hours between those two coats just to give the first coat a chance to start to go off uh, before the next coat goes on. And remember, you have to make sure that it stays dry. Once you've got the second coat on, you've got 48 hours that you must keep it dry for before it gets wet. And if it does get wet within that 48 hours, you, you may find that you get uh, a lot of blistering uh, and the, the effectively it's softening and almost coming off. Uh, so it's, remember, it's just like painting the side of your house. You just wouldn't do it if you knew it was gonna rain. Uh, so similar thing, wanna make sure it gets 48 hours of good weather before you apply the roll-on render. Now, even if that means you have to wait until spring uh, to or, or summer to apply the roll-on render, that's fine. There's ovens out there that have been out there operating for at least a year before they had the roll-on render applied. Uh, so it's not the end of the world. You don't have to put on the roll-on render immediately. You can hold off and wait until you get that good window for good weather. So two coats at least uh, and uh, allowing six hours between the coats. After the 48 hours has passed, you can then start firing the oven up again uh, because the render has had long enough to go off. So you can get back into using your oven, get cooking again, not a problem. When you do that, if you find that you do get some blisters, you may, uh, even despite your best efforts, uh, you may still get a few little blisters forming in the render. Um, there's, it's, not, it's not actually the end of the oven. Uh, it's, it's not gonna destroy it or anything like that. In fact, it's quite easy to fix. You just find those blisters and just scrape them off with a paint scraper or a blade. Uh, sand it back a little bit in that area so you've removed all the loose material and then recoat it. Again, once, it's, once you're sure that it's dry. Um, so if, for example, I fired this up and I found I had some blisters, I would keep firing it up, remove the blisters, let it cool down, and then I go and I just patch those blisters up. The acrylic roll-on render actually patches really well. It's barely visible. If you, if you do a patch over it, it'll blend in and you barely even see it. Um, so that's, that's the process for applying the acrylic roll-on render. Like I said at the start, it's by no means the only way of finishing the dome of the oven, uh, but it is quite quick and easy. Uh, and I think it looks really good. The other thing you can do is you can change the color. So in two years time, you might decide, you know what? I think we might go with like a bright orange. Uh, no problem, just grab a tub with a bright orange and roll it on. And you might have to do two coats to you know, get the full coverage. Job's done, your oven looks completely different. In terms of uh, upkeep, like maintenance over the years, I recommend doing another coat of render about every two years is more than enough. Uh, if you do notice uh, any uh, cracks sort of forming in the render, then it's worthwhile just doing a coat, even just with a brush over those cracks, just to bridge them again and reseal them. Well guys, you have made it through the entire video series. Well done, you have been listening to my voice for far longer than any human should actually have to. Uh, but thank you for watching. Really hope that you've enjoyed the videos. Uh, and if you've actually purchased one of our ovens and you've been following these videos to, to build your oven, we really hope that you have just had so much fun doing that. Uh, and we, we look forward to seeing photos of your finished oven, uh, seeing photos of like the food that you're cooking, some recipes, send them in to us. Uh, we we wanna hear from you. Uh, but guys, again, thank you so much for the, um, the privilege of, of being able to bring this to you. Uh, and again, wherever you are in the world, we hope that you've enjoyed this series and that you've got a whole lot out of it.